whether you drove half an hour, two hours, or you flew across the country, we're really glad to have you here today. Uh, thank you all for, for making the trip. And, uh, and yeah, today we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about the university. We're gonna have a student panel uh, and, uh, and we'll go on a tour and uh, get to, to see the campus uh, up close. And uh, I also, I work in the admissions office. I've worked there for about 17 years now. I've also, I'm also an alumnus of the university. I graduated back in the late 1900s and had a great, uh, great experience here. And I think you students out there are gonna have a great experience as well. So, uh, so welcome, thanks for coming. And first I'd like to congratulate all of you. Pat yourselves on the back. You are all part of a, a really strong group of admitted students uh, from a really strong group of applicants. We had a huge number of applications this year, over 45,000. And, uh, and those of you who were admitted to the university, you guys did a great job. So uh, you're all, uh, you must be very proud of yourselves for, for getting this far. And, uh, and it's a very competitive class, very competitive class, more than we've ever had. So uh, thank you all for applying and congratulations on uh, being admitted. And if I write your application, you all. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, so, so we're going to uh, like so we're going to talk a little bit about the university. We're going to talk about why it's a great place to be a student, how it will help you find your path to success, uh, who will be there to support you along the way, what makes our community strong, and, uh, and where your new mass education uh, can take you. We have a lot of alumni out there, over 300,000, and all the great things. So uh, so yeah, a lot of things. That so let's talk a little bit about why it's a great place to be a student. Recently, uh, you know, there's been a lot of investment in our campus uh, for $2 billion, uh, whether that's in the infrastructure, uh, the buildings, and, and the grounds, things like that. We've got lots of new uh, facilities, updated facilities. This building that you're in right now, Old Chapel, uh, is an historic building that for a long time was just closed off. All you could do was look at it, you didn't come in here. Uh, you know, I was here for four years and never set foot in this place because it wasn't uh, open to the public. And uh, they actually were able to uh, fix it up and use it as a, uh, as a uh, an event space. So this is this, and this just opened a few years ago. Uh, and there are many places like this. And the student union was recently being done. Our, our dining uh, uh, facilities. We have three three of the four uh, uh, dining uh, dining commons have been redone. Uh, they're really, really nice for you to have a chance to eat here today. Uh, please do so. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things have been done in terms of new facilities for academic buildings, for athletic uh, facilities. Uh, even just outside here, uh, if you walk from here towards the campus center, you see a lot of areas that that were just sort of landscape areas of shrubbery and, and flowers and things like that. They've repurposed for people to be able to sit outside and gather outside. You know, with COVID kind of forcing our hand to do that. We're, you know, you don't always want people gathered inside. Uh, you have spaces where students can be outside. Uh, so, uh, it's a lot of improvements have been done uh, very recently over the past few years. And the building boom that we've seen over the past few years really is unlike anything you've seen since the 1970s. So, a lot of great, uh, great things going on structurally. Uh, we're in top, the top 50 for uh, producing successful entrepreneurs. Uh, you don't have to be a business major to, to be an entrepreneur, but you know, we're pretty well known for our business majors. But, you know, that's, that's across the board, you know, students going out there and making things happen, making things happen. Uh, we are ranked number 26 in the uh, U.S. News and World Report uh, public universities. And, you know, you don't get wrapped up in the rankings that much. You know, I mean, it, it great schools up and down the rankings. Uh, really, it's about the fit. I mean, they have a major new report, things like that. It's not about ranking, but just kind of knowing that we, you know, just a few years ago, 10 years ago or so, we were more like in the 50s in our rankings. And it just speaks to the hard work that our faculty and staff and our students have done to really improve the student experience here uh, with the, 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 you know, the investment in our infrastructure and with the addition of uh, academic programs and so on to really help uh, make the, the student experience better here and get, us, uh, get that ranking higher. Uh, we are a top 20 pool of school with a commitment to sustainability. Uh, that's something that's very important here. Our uh, dining services, they uh, they try to use as much local produce as they can. We have two permaculture gardens on campus. Our, our new buildings are, are very green. Uh, in fact, our design building has won awards uh, around that. So um, some really strong uh, programs in terms of sustainability, including the major And, uh, and really, you know, I know I mentioned that you know, we shouldn't get wrapped up in the rankings, but I would say the one ranking that's really, really, really important, that we are number one in campus dining. Uh, we have been for the past five years. And uh, again, it just speaks to the hard work that our dining services both have done to get to that ranking and to maintain that ranking. You know, the uh, food here is really, really good. 
you know, it's a lot better than when I was here. Okay, uh, and I don't know, are there any alumni in the crowd here? Any other alumni? Okay, so you remember. I mean, there's no more, no more chicken pox. Okay, no more of the, uh, well, chicken pox are pretty good. But, uh, but yeah, there's no more of that kind of, you know, just that, that kind of junk food. You, know, you can get some of that, but that's not, you know, that's not your best meal anymore. Um, you know, no more of the ice cream that doesn't melt, you know, that sort of thing. It's really good food, and, and they, they, they do a great job here. So again, just another thing that sort of helped us get to that, that, that 26 ranking is our dining services. So you know, I always say, you know, come for the food, stay for the education. Uh, so yeah, so lots of great things happening here. That's why I'm grateful to, to, to be a student. Uh, how we can help you uh, on your path to success, uh, that's through the, the different majors that we offer, 100, uh, over 100 different majors and minors and certificate programs that you can get involved in. Lots of students will uh, double major, major and minor. Uh, you can design your own major. Uh, the five college consortium is great. It allows you to take courses and use resources of four other colleges in our area, Smith, Mount Holyoke, Amherst, and Hampshire colleges. So you can take up to two classes per semester on the other campuses. You can use your libraries and other facilities. The free bus system that connects all of us. And it really helps to make this a great college town, a uh, great college atmosphere, uh, just in the area in general. And uh, so, so that's, really, that's a, another great feature that you don't find in a lot of big schools. Uh, lots of study abroad destinations. There are over 60 of them available right now, uh, and that will just continue to grow over you know, over the next uh, you know, years. You know, the, we had, a, of course, everyone had to sort of shut down the, the study abroad for, for a while there with COVID, but it's really making a big comeback, and we're seeing a lot of students take advantage of that. So, uh, a lot of great destinations and, and opportunities there, whether it's taking courses at another university abroad, or doing research, or doing internships abroad. We have a lot of different options. There. Career development, uh, professional connections. Uh, our career services office does a great job placing students and helping students take that next step, whether that's uh, you know in a career or even getting ready for grad school with our pre-professional programs, pre-med, pre-law, and so on. Uh, so they do a great job in preparing students. They do career fairs uh, throughout the, the year. They do them. Uh, their specific career fairs. So the schools and colleges will do them for you know for engineers, for humanities students, or so on. Uh, just to you know, to, to kind of narrow it down and help students sort of make those connections. They do internship fairs as well. So for students who are, who are not necessarily getting ready to graduate, but who want to get some of that hands-on experience, they can go to the internship fair and uh, and get some ideas there, or just go to the department buy a great internship fair. Uh, and research. You know, we spend a lot of money on research here. Two hundred nineteen million dollars in the past fiscal year. Uh, I'm not sure about this year, but I know in the past we were ranked uh, third in terms in Massachusetts for uh, colleges and universities what they spend on, on, uh, on research. So that's after MIT and Harvard. So you know there are a lot of other great uh, schools in this state uh, and for us to be that high in terms of the, uh, the amount we spend on research really tells you something. And, and it's not just for our grad students, our undergrads as well. To, to get their, uh, their hands-on experience. And then you can customize your academic path. I mean, like I mentioned before, uh, you know, you can, uh, a lot of students will double major. You can major and have you know, a minor or a couple of minors. We have certificate programs that are kind of like a little more than a major, a little less than a, a little more than a minor, a little less than a major. Uh, and uh, and then we have a program where you can actually design your own major called bachelor's degree with individual concentration with EDIC. Uh, and that's a great program for students who have interest in several different areas and kind of want to put something together on their own. We have a program that allows students to do that. So lots of great academic opportunities there. Uh, lots of lots of uh, customization. And we'll, we'll be there to support you along the way. Uh, you know, that, that's everyone from your, your peers, peer advisors, and peer mentors to our professional staff members, professional advisors, faculty are there to help as well. You know, the faculty here are very hands on. They have to do the research, but they also are committed to teaching. They want students to come and see them. They have their set office hours, but uh, even if students want to see them outside of those office hours, they make themselves available. Uh, if anything, they complain that not enough students come to, to see them. You know, they, they want to talk to students. You know, if you spend your whole adult life, you know, uh, becoming an expert in the field, and you have a fresh young mind who wants to talk to you about it, they'll talk to you about it. You know? uh, so, uh, so definitely take advantage of that. And uh, not just for you know, a particular class, but if you need someone as a mentor for an internship or some sort of research project you want to get involved in, they're there for you to, uh, to do that. So definitely take advantage of that. What makes our community strong? Well, we do a lot of different things. Um, one would be our, our student groups and clubs. 
We have over 300 of them, whether they're athletic clubs, like uh, our, our you know, volleyball club or, or uh, the hockey club, things like that. Uh, we have our, our varsity sports at Division One, but we have our club sports, and then we have our intramural as well. So lots of ways to get involved there. Other student groups like the, uh, the theater club or science fiction club, or you name it, there's a club for everything. All the academic majors have different clubs that are attached to them, so lots of ways to get involved, community service, whatever you're looking for, our cultural organizations, we're all there to, uh, to help you do things outside of the classroom as well. So you can be busy with that. Residential community, we have several different uh, housing options on campus. Uh, most of our students do live on campus, which is nice, makes for a great for the college community. But uh, you know, we have uh, what we call our, our residential academic programs, or RAPs, where you can live among other students who have similar academic interests. You can take classes together, and it really helps to sort of make that transition from high school to college a little bit easier when you have a smaller community like that, and you take the classes together. And in some cases, they'll offer classes right in your residence hall, right in the norm, uh, that are only open to people who are in that residential academic program. So it's a nice way to offset some of the larger classes with uh, the small class like that. Uh, you know, like I said, lots of club sports, intramural, things like that. Our uh, uh, retention rate from first year to second year is 91%, uh, which really speaks to the hard work that our uh, staff members do and our faculty and so on to make sure that our, our students are happy here in their first year, uh, to make sure that that transition goes as smoothly as possible. Because it's a transition for, for, for anyone who's, uh, who's coming here outside of high school or if you're transferring from another college. Uh, we want to make sure that students uh, are. Are taken care of. So we, they do a good job in terms of maintaining students from first and second year. Uh, and students get involved, activism, you know, there's always, uh, you know, uh, the student voices are heard here. Uh, the, we, we tell students we want them to ask questions and then question the answers, you know, so that's what college is about, about sort of pushing the you know, you know, pushing, pushing yourselves forward you know, academically and socially. So our students definitely get involved. Where would UMass education take you? Uh, you know, it can take you to you know, lots of places. You know, we have 300,000, over 300,000 graduates. Uh, and, you know, they're all, some of them are right here in Amherst, like myself. Uh, but they've, you know, they've gone all over the world and done great things. Uh, our alumni get involved with uh, the university, stay involved with the university. We have panels, uh, the, uh, the career services office will have panels and they bring the alumni back. Talk about their experiences at UMass and how it led to their success in their chosen field. Uh, and they're always willing to take students on as far as uh, internships and, and an active back and graduate. They, you know, they, they're looking for those UMass graduates to uh, come and work with them. They know what, you, uh, what you've done and, and the, the, the level of education that you've received, and, and they're more than happy to uh, have you uh, come in and follow in their footsteps. So our, our alumni do a great job with that. Uh, we want you to connect with employers, whether it's while you're here at the, at the university through internships and, and, and programs on campus, and then for afterwards. So you graduate, you stay connected, and we're a great, uh, great community of alumni. There's a lot of, lot of uh, pride here, a lot of uh, school spirit. Uh, you know, anytime I can wear maroon, I, I can. You know, I, I got blue on today, but I got my maroon tie. Uh, my wife kind of rolls her eyes whenever I'm trying to choose the color of something, and my, my first choice is maroon. Uh, you know, and I'll say, oh, well, the curtain's in the room, they close the window, it's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, so, so yeah, so you'd be surprised how many room sweatshirts and, uh, and the things that, uh, that one can collect. So, uh, so yeah, so it, it's, it's really, it's fun being along and you can run into people all over the world and say, oh, you want to see Mass too? That's fun. And you can sort of talk about it. So, uh, really a lot of stuff is full pride and you can definitely stay engaged and stay connected. Uh, so yeah, so I want to talk about staying connected just with the admissions office and with the campus as you make your decision as to where you're going to go to college. Uh, on the left side of the screen, we see our, our social media uh, uh, connections there. And then on the right side, you'll see a couple different uh, email addresses. Mail at admissions, the top one. That's for the admissions office. It contacts people like myself and our, our administrators. Uh, if you have really admission dean type questions that you, that you want to ask, you can send them there. If you have some sort of administrative type of things uh, that you want to send through, that's where the, that would go. Uh, if you're an international student, you can go through uh, the international uh, email address. The one at the bottom is the one where you can connect with our tour guests, and they'll answer questions about being a student here uh, currently. So just tell them what your major is or, or the major that you're interested in pursuing and uh, what sort of activities you're interested in, and they'll try to connect you with someone who has uh, similar interests 
and they can talk about their experiences here. So that's the one that's really uh, the most important one, I think. So. And speaking of students, we are moving on now to our probably the best part of this presentation, which will be our student panel. Hello, my name is Mary Wu. I'm a senior here at UMass. I'm a biology major with a theater minor. Um, I hail from Brooklyn, New York. And when I'm not doing events like this, I am a member of the Women's Ultimate Frisbee team. I'm a biology peer advisor, and I also volunteer at the school's herbarium. Hey guys, my name is Emily. I'm a sophomore here at UMass Amherst. I'm double majoring with education in Spanish, and then I'm also pursuing a TESOL certificate, so it's teaching English as a second language. I'm from Haverhill, Mass, so it's one of those towns in Massachusetts that's not spelled the way it's said. Pretty typical. And when I'm not giving tours and talking to prospective students, I volunteer in the Amherst Public Schools, and then I'm also a volunteer here on campus with Disability Services. Hi everyone, I'm Audrey, I'm a junior here at UMass. I'm pursuing a dual degree in microbiology and public health on the pre-med track. I'm a tour guide, but I'm also an admissions diversity fellow, so I do a lot of work with underrepresented students, helping them transition into the college application process in their first year here at UMass. When I'm not working, I'm serving in the Student Government Association as a Secretary of Health and Wellbeing. Um, I'm doing research for the Commonwealth Honors College in the ICONS program. Um, and I also volunteer with Holyoke Connections for the Boltwood program. Um, I'm from Peabody, Massachusetts, so kind of in the same move with Emily. Uh, but I'm a first generation student. I came here from the Philippines, so I have that first gen experience if you have any questions. Yeah, hi guys, my name is Phil. Um, I'm a geography major here with an uh, education minor. Uh, I recently switched my major from math education to geography because I failed a lot of classes. Um, so <laughs> due to that, I have to fifth year, even though I am a senior, but you know, I get one more year of school. I'm happy about that. Um, I'm from Princeton, Massachusetts, which is a small town in Central Mass. Mass. If anyone knows about what you should steer it, that's Princeton, so that's where I'm from. Uh, about an hour from school. Uh, some things I'm involved in on campus, I was a tour guide like everyone else. Um, I also work as a transfer student ambassador. So I am a transfer student. I came here the spring semester of my freshman year. Been here ever since, absolutely loved it, obviously. Uh, best decision I made here. Uh, and then I'm a part of the Outing Club, so we can take a bunch of cool trips around Western Mass, hiking, kayaking, rock climbing, things like that. Uh, I'm sort of on the club tennis team, not actually good enough to make the real team. Uh, so I am on the B team. Uh, we play it three times a year. It's not ideal, but those days are fun. Uh, and I also did just recently join the geography club, so we'll probably be looking at maps. Um, I haven't shown up to a meeting yet, but you know, <laughs> what I think is going to happen. So. Perfect. Right. And actually, you touched on this. Uh, can you, uh, the first question, can you tell us about your academic path during your time here? Uh, you know, I'll kick it off. Uh, so uh, I came in as a math education major. Uh, I then failed Calc 2, Calc 3, Math Theory, Abstract Algebra, uh, Comp Sci, all these hard math classes uh, that I just like did not want to take. Um, so I met my advisor because I was like, this probably isn't the right path for me. Uh, he kind of told me straight up, like, he probably didn't think I was going to get a job as a math teacher, which was like, <laughs> kind of sad to hear. Uh, but you know, it was also nice to hear that. And then someone was like, you know, being straight up and honest with me. Uh, so I decided to switch my major. Uh, he got me in contact with the geography advisor. Uh, it took us literally five minutes on a Zoom call to switch and officially become a geography ma uh, major here. Uh, and then I was able to keep my education mind, which was, you know, obviously doable. So it's really, really easy to switch your major. Um, you just have to talk to your advisor, and again, it took me literally five minutes. So. Anyone else want to chime in on that one? Just going to give an idea of what your, what your path is like. Yeah, um, so I came into UMass as a public health major, and um, I had a bunch of AP credits, so if you've been working hard in high school, it does pay off. Um, I take a lot of credits, I knocked out all my gen eds before coming in, and then I panicked my freshman year because I was going to graduate early. Did not want to do that, um, so I picked up a second major. Um, and so really, I think the great thing about UMass, and you've heard it from us, and you hear it from a lot of students that you talk to, Everyone seems to be like minoring in something, pursuing a certificate in something else, or dual degree, double majoring. Whatever it is, there's like a bunch of different ways that you can add things to your original major or switch out. Um, so that's just another really great part of UMass. If you're like me and you couldn't really pick, you can do it all. Um, or you can go in with your exploratory track to sort of narrow it down. Um, you can choose whatever college that you want to um, do your exploratory track in. And then from there, you kind of just classes in that field, then you hopefully get a sense of what you want to do. All right, cool. And sort of staying on the, on the uh, academic topic, 
Uh, what's an example of an interesting course you've taken? Yeah, I mean, I've taken a lot of interesting courses. I would argue that most of my courses have been interesting courses, but one that was super extra special, or you know what, I'll talk about one I'm in right now. Um, it's called mammalogy. Um, so it's just the study of mammals. And I'm learning so much. I can tell you guys so many weird, gross facts about mammals now. Um, and I just, I love the professor. She's my professor freshman year. She still remembers my name. Um, I just love sitting down and going to class every day and also going to lab and like um, studying like fossils, you know, just like tables laid out with all these different bones and things like that. So that's one biology class I really liked. Um, very different from theater. Theater classes are all super fun. One I'm in right now is called Acting Shakespeare. Um, so it's really fun just to like step into a role and become someone else and speak in a way that like we just don't talk anymore. So that's me this year, this semester. A really fun lab that I ended up taking last semester, um, there is a food science microbiology lab. We basically like fermented yeast and made beer for the semester. <laughs> that was pretty fun. I did not, I wouldn't recommend tasting it. We did. It's not good, guys. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a fun process. Uh, so to satisfy my arts requirement for the gen eds, um, I'm not an artsy person at all. I can't paint to draw or any of that stuff. Uh, so I took history of gardens. Uh, we studied gardens, uh, you know, like in 1400s London, uh, all the way up to the construction of Central Park in New York City, uh, to permaculture gardens being you know created on campus within the past five years. So that was a really interesting thing to be taking. Uh, I didn't have to color or draw, so I was happy. Um, and it still satisfied my mental requirement. So they, that's you're going to find that here that even for the you know, more specific gen ed requirements, there's still tons of courses that can satisfy uh, those requirements if that's not for you, like your strong suit. All right, thank you. Now, uh, what is your relationship like with your professors? And who's a professor who's meant a lot to you and, and why? So I'm in a class right now and it's called Tutoring in Schools. So we meet once a week for two and a half hours and there are these two professors, their names are Sharon and Bob, and they've taught this same exact class for 34 years. So they know it like the back of their hands, and they have over uh, 50 students, and yet they know they knew each person's name by the second class, and it just made me feel um, just so involved and want me to be, want to get more involved in the class. And when I tell you, Sharon and Bob are they may be a little bit on the older side, but in one of our classes, they asked to race us, so we had to go outside. <laughs> we had to go outside and on the lawn and right in front of the like W.E.B. Du Bois Library, and they were like, okay, we're all gonna race now. So they like ran a 100 meter with us, and like that's like what they did, because um, they just wanted to show us that like they are still, they're still in it, they are still gonna be the best professors ever. And for some reason, from that moment on, I've just been so invested in the class, because I've never had a teacher be like, okay, we're gonna race now, like, I can beat you. And they, they did beat half the class, they're just really fast. Um, but it's just like the little, such like a big moment in my life where from then on I was like, okay, this is the class where it's good, I want to change. Uh, so I uh, have this Professor Eve, uh, Professor Vogel, but we go, she goes by Eve, uh, sort of close. Um, but she was, she's been my geography professor. I've had four classes with her in the past two semesters. Uh, really, really cool lady. Uh, she's been t uh, telling us about all the different work she's done. She used to live out in uh, Oregon. She worked a lot on the Columbia River, uh, you know, tracking sand migration, all that type of stuff, and how dams impact the different uh, rivers and like throughout the whole ecosystem. Uh, we'll get into it because it's like, kind of boring for some people. Uh, but I think it's really cool. So I've been talking to her about all the different you know, research that she's been doing, uh, and then possibly this summer I'll be working with her uh, to identify different culverts on roads which need to be, uh, you know, taken out and re-put in as a different type of culvert. Culverts the little like uh, tunnels that streams roll through uh, underneath uh, roads and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, anyway, kind of boring to some people. I think it's really cool. Um, so I've gotten to know you very well, um, and yeah, she's definitely my favorite. So you talked a little bit about research. Uh, we're a big public research institution and all that. So how are students on campus getting involved in research, and uh, what are some unique uh, research opportunities available? Yeah, so students are 
highly involved in research in just about every department on campus. We're an arm of research institutions, so that just means we're doing a lot of research here. Um, we're in good company. We're like the third funded in the state behind Harvard and MIT. Um, so a lot of people think research is solely STEM. It's not. There's history going on in the linguistics department, the arts department, English. Um, it's really cool. I had a friend go abroad and study art history, actually, in like the Louvre. I don't think I pronounced correctly, but I'm sure he does now. Um, but there are a lot of ways to get involved, and you can get involved as early on as your freshman year. Um, if you're looking for a lab, or if you find a professor with research interests very similar to yours, you can reach out to them directly or go through our undergraduate research office, um, and they can coordinate you to those professors and those opportunities. Um, and then you can attach yourself to that lab and um, help them with that research question and project your four years if you want to. Um, but there are some unique opportunities like the one I'm in, um, which is the ICONS program, which stands for Integrated Concentrations of Sciences. So it's very multidisciplinary, like make it your own. Um, I'm on the biomedicine track, we have renewable energy tracks and different tracks depending on your interests. Um, so with a bunch of different students, a bunch of different disciplines, we all come together to solve these big issues in biomedicine. So our freshman year we were making projections to track the spread of COVID-19 in the U.S. And in our sophomore year, we were doing nanoparticle research on anti, um, antimicrobial resistant bacteria. Um, and then this year, I've been doing a study on breast milk samples from Massachusetts and looking at dioxin levels in them. Um, and what's really cool about that is that it's really self-driven. I've made a protocol for each of these experiments. I find the equipment and the funding, and we like, carry it out through the year, and I'm taking this on as my honors thesis project. So if you're looking for that like unique, make it yourself, do something you're super passionate about, um, research opportunity, that might be a program that's good for you. But if you're looking for that traditional experience where you build a really good um, relationship with your PI, you have a lab group that you work with those four years, that's also available to you in any department. So um, that's a little bit about research. All right. And uh, kind of on a related topic, uh, have any of you been involved in Internships while you're here in UMass, and what are some of the coolest internships you've heard of? Yeah, um, so <laughs> right now I'm doing an internship with UCSF as a reproductive health communications intern. We're doing like mobile app development. Um, doing it during the semester is kind of unusual. A lot of students end up doing it during um, the summer or even between the break between fall and spring semester. Um, and there are research opportunities on campus. You can look for them um, within your department, but also a lot of students do end up going to like local companies over in Boston, even around the country to do their internships. Um, my friend just got into an internship in Alaska, so he's gonna do um, salmon conservation um, work there, which is really cool. I won't hear for him for like the whole summer because it's remote, but that's like, really cool that he gets to be in the back country for that long run. So there's a lot of different internships that students are a part of. It's not a graduation requirement, so you don't have to do one to graduate. It'll never stop you from graduating. But I'd say that the majority of students do and they use it as really good um, career experience. So uh, next question, what are some ways that, that students can develop their leadership skills? There's lots of places to develop your leadership skills, um, and whether that be academically or outside of that in whatever club or organization you decide to join. Um, so for me, I was the captain of the Women's Ultimate Frisbee B team for um, my first three years at UMass. Uh, that was a program that we built from the ground up, so there was only one um, Women's Ultimate team where there were like three men's teams, and we were like, well, our program's really growing. We should make something that's really focused on learning and development. So I started that with um, some of my fellow freshmen, and then we got that team up and running. I felt like it was in a really good place, and then I had honed and developed my skills um, as a leader and as a player on that team. So I decided to try out for the A team, um, and that's where I am now. Um, and that you know that leadership experience doesn't go away. I'm still a leader on that on my team and all that stuff, um, just because I'll, I'll take those leadership skills with me wherever I go. Yeah, I think one thing, um, getting involved in clubs and everything uh, definitely helps you do leadership skills. Uh, but I've got a lot of, you know, where I've gotten my leadership skills just from this job. Uh, a lot of different, like, big, kind of the larger student organizations will have, uh, like, a mentee-mentor program. 
Uh, so all of us, when we first came and got hired as tour guides, uh, we were taught tour guides in training, uh, and we had mentors that were even older tour guides who helped us you know, get trained and everything. They helped us get the, you know, the lay of the land and welcomed us to the tour guide family. Uh, and then me and Mary Lou, when they are in the same hired class, uh, we then became you know, mentors for the new class, and Audrey, uh, when Audrey, know, they became the new, uh, you know, mentors for the new class. So uh, that's just you know, another, you know, another example of how you can you know, uh, be helping someone train and get accustomed to uh, living at UMass and being a part of different groups, uh, but then also just like, you know, developing different leadership skills. So I really, really enjoyed that. And these, these questions that I'm asking are ones that we've generated in the admissions office, and they, uh, many of them actually came from other programs that we've run, and they actually came from, from the audience and from the students. So one of those questions would be, what if I'm interested in a lot of different things and can't choose? <laughs> <laughs> the world is really your oyster here at UMass. I don't think we're at all the exception. You'll hear so many students are in like, Three different clubs, doing like two different majors, tons of different minors. So really, we have a great like career advising. We have great like academic advisors who will sit down, work with you, make it so that you have all your like all your classes together. And you're fulfilling all your requirements, and you can do everything that you're interested in. So graduate within four years if you want to. Um, and that goes for the same thing with like clubs and like other interests. I think. Uh, students are really encouraged to pursue a lot of different things that they're interested in. Um, and the really cool thing is that you can try new things here. I feel like I signed up for like maybe 30 clubs at that club expo at the beginning of the year, and now I'm in like four. So <laughs> you narrow it down, I think, as well. Um, you'll definitely get a feel for yourself and growth as like person, find out what you're most passionate about. But until that point where you know, definitely just try everything. Yeah, and it's really easy to change your mind. You know, if you come in thinking that you totally want one thing, you're not going to be stuck in that for your years at UMass, however long you're here. You, it's, you can change your major really easily, and, you know, Phil's discussed that a little bit. You can add on if you want. Um, but if you, if you don't feel like taking it all on, that's okay. Because, like Audrey said, like, you, you do learn how to pick and choose and how to budget your time and think like, okay, maybe I don't need to be doing, you know, theater academically, just as an example, I can do it as a club, and that's a compromise, and you'll learn like where to do that for yourself. And then you also have support systems that help you make these decisions with your academic advisor. Um, for whatever major you have, you'll have an academic advisor. Um, there's career advisors, and then there's also like RAs, your resident assistants, your peer mentors in your freshman year hall. So there's a, tons of people to help you support, um, help support make you <laughs> what are words? Um, <laughs> help support you make. <laughs> I have to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many just different people that are gonna help you to make the life that you, that you want to like live here. So you're gonna have tons of different opportunities for that. And when Joe asks question like you don't know what to choose, don't don't choose. Choose them all and then narrow it down from there because that's gonna be like the best way to kind of figure out your life here, just because there are so many opportunities. Uh, so how does UMass support uh, building an inclusive community? Um, I think it's definitely the student body here uh, that you know makes UMass the great school that it is. Um, there's been you know, some like issues coming up on campus and everything, and just the way that the, uh, maybe within this past year, the way that the student body has responded to that, uh, kind of just like, you know, standing up against like all these different, you know, things that happen on campus, I guess, um, shows that like the students here do care, like we do want to see a change on campus, and also obviously within, within the world, and just you know, making this a more uh, like, safe and inclusive place. Um, I definitely always felt very you know, welcomed and uh, included on campus, uh, but I think when there are issues that do arise, uh, it's really like the students that take it into their own hands, like we stand up for what's right and, uh, you know, Kind of make it known that like, we don't we don't want to allow like these uh, you know acts of like hate on our campus. Uh, I think that you know speaks a lot to the students that are happy with us. All right, and uh, I'm going to ask a question that I'd like each of you to answer. All right, uh, and this one is how have you grown as an individual through your time? All right, I can start this one off. 
I think, for me personally, I came into UMass as a business major. If you met me, I'm not a business major. I'm obviously an education major. You'd, you'd see me in a classroom and not think twice that I, I shouldn't be there. Um, so I came in and honestly, like, I saw economics on my schedule. I was like, this is not me. I can't do this. And so UMass helped me change my major to what it is now, obviously, education. And I couldn't be happier because I think I've grown into the major as well. Um, my professors have said the same thing because when I started out, I wasn't too confident on the education part of it. But now that I'm in it, I think I've completely grown into the major itself. I definitely think UMass has made me a wiser person. Um, a lot of the time, I feel like we get really wrapped up in this idea of like, college, okay, college is the next step out of high school, so that's where I'm gonna go, and that's what I'm gonna do, and then if I'm college, I'm gonna get a career, and that's where I'm gonna go, and that's gonna take me down a path. But college is a place to gain knowledge, and to learn new things, and open your mind to avenues that you didn't even know you had a door closed to in your head, so uh, UMass has just definitely opened me up and um, made me more considerate of the world around me and the world I live in and how I interact with other people and you know that we're all free thinking um, individual individuals. Yeah, I think something that I've taken from my time at UMass and something that I'll really value after my time at UMass is just the confidence and the support that I've gotten from my professors, from my teaching assistants, from my peers. Um, like I said, I'm first gen, um, first of color. I came in here like, you know, imposter syndrome, not really like sure of how I'm going to get into the career that I want to, not having any connections, not really like, you know, feeling like I have that same legacy that other students do, or same connections that other students or opportunities that other students may have. Um, but it's really been the professional development and personal development that I've gotten just from like hanging out with friends, talking to professors after class, um, like grabbing lunch with my teaching assistants and talking about how they're like pursuing research and things like that. I feel like I'm so much more confident in my skills and in my like, knowledge and just in my like place as a student in this institution, knowing that like, okay, like no, I, I deserve to be here. I deserve the opportunities that I get, the grades that I receive and like all those things. Um, like stopping to doubt myself so much. I think that's something super important that I've learned here and something that I think a lot of people start to learn at this age. Uh, yeah, kind of just to uh, you know, continue off of what Emily was talking about with uh, just like the support from professors. Uh, so obviously you know, struggle through math and everything. The advisor told me uh, he was actually part of the hiring process in one of the regional dish, uh, school districts in Western Mass. Uh, who hired math teachers, and he told me like straight up like I wouldn't hire you, um, which like tough to hear, but like also nice to hear because like, then I wasn't gonna waste away the next like you know a couple of years of college working on this uh, you know degree that would never really help me in what I wanted to do. Uh, so that was a very honest thing that I wanted to hear from him. Uh, and then switching to geography, the geography professors here have been more than helpful, uh, knowing that I did switch in late and everything that I did have to you know kind of like, catch up everyone else uh, or catch up to everyone else. Uh, they've helped me with you know possible jobs after school, different research that they've been in. Uh, they've helped me you know show that like, there actually is a field in geography. Because when I first told people that I was a geography major, they're like, "What are you gonna do? Make a map?" Um, it's like, you know, the maps are mostly all me. Like we're not looking at you know, there's no more islands to discover things like that. Uh, but like there are so many other things, and that's helped me um, also then explain it to my parents why I'm a geography major because they were doing the same thing. So um, yeah, definitely just like the support of the professors and the advisors. Uh, really good here. Well, I'm changing my answer. I came to the school probably as the pickiest eater you've ever met. Um, I came on a diet of plain pasta, chicken fingers and french fries, and peanut butter sandwiches. Um, don't get me wrong, I still get those things here because we're number one dining. The plain pasta here is way better than the plain pasta at my house. Like, plain pasta and cheese, you can't get me wrong. But I think as how I've grown as a person is this school going to be trying new foods which is very important because you, you don't want to go somewhere where there's only plain pasta and only chicken fingers. You want to go somewhere where there's made to order sushi, made to order stir fry, peanut butter that they actually make right in front of you that you can then put on a peanut butter sandwich. Like, I think those are the important things. So I changed my answer. I've grown as a person. I've grown from a picky eater to someone who will not eat anything in these animals. That's my answer. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>
said it was a boot camp. All right. So uh, now, actually, I'd like to open it up uh, to the audience. Anyone have any questions for our panelists? So the question was just about, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, so how do I acclimate to life here at UMass? Um, it was really easy because they provide these opportunities at your um, new student orientation and um, transitions so that, like, it's like, okay, here's a bunch of other out-of-state students, so then, you know, I know I'm not the only one. And then, um, I just kind of, I mean, UMass is so great because it's so big and it kind of feels like my home in that way. I don't know where you're from, but New York is quite large and so is UMass. Um, so I, it, I was really scared, like, am I going to meet all the people and then I'm going to know all the people? Um, no, not at UMass because you're constantly meeting new people all the time. And then um, I would say just like for anybody, no matter where you're coming from, join a club. Join a club that you where you really enjoy what it is that you're doing because that's your community. They all have a similar interest to you, so you're going to make fast friends really quickly. Um, but yeah, and then there's there's just so much support for um, out-of-state students just because they know that, you know, we are blessed. This is a insane Massachusetts school, so they do provide services that, like, show you around how to, like, live in the mountains. I don't know, you know? <laughs> Which is really fun because that's something different that I've never been able to do before. So I just soak it on. Now, are you a Yankees fan or a Mets? Mets. I like the socks. Okay? <laughs> My mom's from Worcester, okay? Oh. Don't come at me. <laughs> yeah, full disclosure, I am a Yankees fan. Oh, oh no. There <laughs> are enough of us here that we, we have each other backs. It is Red Sox, aren't you? But, uh, but if you are a Yankees fan, Mets fan, I don't know how you survive, but Yankees fan, you'd be alright. Well, I didn't uh, know until now. We got your back. But, uh, but yeah, to, but yeah cause that's the thing. People come from, from so many places. We do get a lot of them from New York and you know, other states. And it, you know, a lot of times people who are from Massachusetts, right, where uh, you, know, you, have, you have people who may say, oh, well, I'm thinking about going to UMass, but it seems like half my senior class applied there. I don't want to go and see everybody that I already know. The thing is, when you come here, you know, you all sort of blend into this this environment, into this uh, uh, this community, so that you're not seeing your high school friends everywhere you go. You know, you can find each other and talk to each other, but you know, I I was born in New York, that's why I'm a Yankees fan, but I went to, to high school in Springfield, which is about 45 minutes away, and you know, pretty much everyone in my senior class at least applied here, and a bunch of us went here, and there are people that I that I see now that are like, oh yeah, you did go to UMass, because we you know we sort of. We went different directions. We were in this in this big place together, but it wasn't like high school part two. So don't worry about that side of it either. You know, um, it's not like you just you know you, you're going someplace where you're going to know everybody. Uh, whether you're you're from close by or from far away, you're going to be able to, to integrate into this uh, into this community. So there was I think there was another question over here. How, how large are your major classes versus like the general? Um, so it's going to be different for like every different major. Uh, geography is a very very small major, um, as opposed to you know, like you take like business or something. But um, I'll just talk about mine. Uh, so this past, both these past two semesters, I've been in all major courses. Uh, last year they were all below 20 students, and this year they're all below 15. Uh, and the cool thing with the major classes is that it's only people within your major taking those courses. So you know, there's all these other students that are taking the same exact classes as you. Uh, last semester, there were eight of us that took all four classes together. This semester, I think there's, I think there's like four of us that take all the classes together. So you really get to know those students in your classes. But again, it's going to be you know different on every different major. And something I want to add is that if there's something you're super interested in, even if it's like a class of 30, class of 60, um, you can talk to your professor, reach out, ask to do an independent study. You meet one-on-one -on -one with your professor, maybe you do some extra material, go more in depth with what you're learning, um, build that relationship with that professor, um, and you get like an extra like, credit or up to three, I think. So that's always an option if you're a bit concerned. Um, but yeah, that's basically what major classes are like. Just following up on that question, what's the example of biggest classes in general education? Yeah, um, so, Psychology 100, I would say, might be the biggest class that you'll you'll see. I mean, I took it on Zoom, so they, they really they, they kind of fiddled with it. So that there were 400 people in that class, but that was because it was on Zoom. Um, the biggest class I've been in is probably about like 250. But that big class, 
we'll, we'll talk about this on tour, so I don't need to go too much into it, but they make it feel a lot smaller in a lot of ways. I know that can be, that's an intimidating number, um, but it's also nice to just kind of like be, you know, one of many sometimes in those bigger classes. And one cool thing, I guess, about COVID is that um, even if you still do have those big lectures, I don't know about y'all, but I have like Zoom options um, from now on, like even in a class of 30, if I'm like out with a cold, I can join a class Zoom. And the same for like Site 100, I know that I'm at a D who is in it, and they just took the Zoom the entire time. So, no, we're going to do some lectures. <laughs> So I had that discussion as early on as my freshman year um, because I was ahead with credits, but then sophomore year they usually reach out to you to schedule like your first advising appointment and schedule that like track. Um, and then you kind of start to meet more frequently as you go on that. Because I'm at my med school, it's like you're going to want to reach out to them like periodically to build that committee letter, to start talking about when they're going to take your exams and like build that like relationship with them because they're going to be writing your recommendation. So as early on as freshman year, you can set up an appointment on Navigate. They'll teach you how to do this at NSO if you come here. Um, but yeah. So why did you end up choosing UMass? Oh, why did we choose UMass? That's a great question. Should we all answer it really quick? Yeah, how much time we have left? Omigo? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> why did I choose UMass? Um, one, it was really big. I love how big it is. Um, two, I was choosing between a school here um, and Chicago. So that's really far. And I didn't, uh, wanted to be a discussion every time I wanted to come home. You know, getting on a plane is really different than getting on a, a coach bus that comes right on campus. So that really influenced my decision. And UMass is also, they were very generous and um, they gave me robust. Uh, is that <laughs> okay? <laughs> the robust like financial assistance, um, and they were really easy to work with on all that front. So I chose this school because when I started touring other schools, I felt like they were kind of putting on a performance for me, just so that everything looked perfect, everything looked neat, and everything was like just how it looked in every single brochure. And then when I came onto this campus. I did the hour and a half tour, I saw a kid playing a tuba, I saw a kid on a unicycle, I saw people playing football, and it just felt very real to me. It felt not like a performance, it felt like there were actual students that actually went here and that actually looked like they were having a good time. So that was why I chose here, it's basically because of a unicycle, I guess. <laughs> I have a more boring answer. I don't know. Um, research. I really love research. I really like science. I love that it had those opportunities. Um, second, there was a campus. I looked at so many weird schools in the city and the schools that were like actually in the middle of nowhere. Like you think Amherst is the middle of nowhere, but rural Maine is a lot worse. Um, so yeah, like it had a campus with young people. Amherst is such a college town. And there's so many young people around. I absolutely love that. And third, robust money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like I said, I transferred here. Uh, so I went to my, the first school I was at was a small state school in Massachusetts. Uh, it was a big commuter school, big suitcase school, basically like 80% of the campus and left on the weekends. So I found myself going home every single weekend and seeing my parents every weekend, uh, which I did not want, and they didn't want it either. Uh, so uh, I'm kind of you know, happy that we all had the same thoughts. I uh, looked into schools to transfer to, and I figured, why not let's try UMass? It's in state, it's the best financial option for me. Uh, if I don't like the big school, I can just transfer somewhere else. Uh, I didn't even apply here when I first applied to schools. I thought it was too big, but then I went to that small school and I realized how small it actually is. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I chose. I know it's a very cliche thing to say on tour, but like you can make a big school feel small, you can't make a small school feel big. It's very, very true, so take it to home. Yeah. You have a question. Yeah. Okay, sad story. <laughs> I know, that's not what you want to hear. Um, I tried, but guess what happened? Oh my goodness, we're all so smart, yes. Um, so I planned to go to Scotland um, with the International Programs Office. Um, it was really great, we were really going. I had my own advisor through the IPO to help me get to the UK. And like, I don't have a passport, 
even, so like I needed a lot of help, and there were so many people to help me. There were students who had studied abroad before um, who were there helping me, and I planned it all out, and then it got canceled, which was a huge bummer. Um, but there's tons of different ways to study EMAS. The biggest one that people do, I would say, is the Five College Consortium, which again, they'll talk about on tour. Um, but there's four other schools in the area where you can take up to two classes a semester at those schools. So if doing these big like semester-long trips maybe isn't your thing, I recommend you know traveling at the small liberal arts school and then coming back and having just so much fun at this big public public school. Yeah, another sad story. I was supposed to go to Ecuador and then COVID, um, which was really sad. But all hope is not lost. Um, my friends ditched me this semester. One of them is in Ireland right now. Someone's in Spain. My friend was in France last semester. I'm getting back really cool souvenirs. I didn't get to go abroad, but um, they did, and they're having a great time. So it, it's back. It's up and running. Um, but no. not a sob story because I'm the youngest of this group. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to Salamanca, Spain next summer. I'm really excited. It's a summer. It's one of the summer programs. So. I didn't want to leave UMass during like, the actual semester, so I was able to go during the summer. I'm there for 90 days. I'm really excited about it. I'm actually teaching English over there as well as taking classes, so I'm excited. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We have time for one more question. All right. Yeah. 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 How about the post-academic life? Mm -hmm. Like socialization is fraternity heavy. Is it bar heavy? Is it um, I'll just say that there's tons of things to do, uh, no matter like who you are. I know that sounds very cliche to say, uh, but it's true that there are just so many students here that you know they're going to find someone that want, someone that has an interest just like you. Um, what I found that I did when I was on campus for my first two years, I went up hiking all the time. Um, I found my friends through the other club, and you know, we went off on like uh, different you know, like hiking trips, things like that. Um, but then it also is like, kind of like the social scene of it. Uh, you'll find like social gatherings, um, like kind of all over the place. Um, if, you, if that's something you're looking for, uh, you, you, you can find it here. Um, there's some other uh, fraternities. Uh, only about 10% of uh, students here are actually involved in Greek life. Uh, so it's not a huge number, but that still is 3,000 people. Uh, so it's you know, a good number. Um, we say like if you want it, it's there. But if you don't want it, it's not going to affect your social life. By any means. I'm not in a frat. I rushed one one semester and I absolutely hated it, uh, so I quit. <laughs> uh, I've had the time of my life here. I have fun all the time. Uh, so it's kind of if you want it, it's there. If you don't want it, don't do it. <laughs> and in terms of like possible like nightlife, you know, we are in Amherst, so there is a little town center where there's restaurants and, and bars for 21 plus students. And then there's also Northampton, a small city um, nearby, and they've got a lot going on there in terms of the same, they, same things in Amherst, but then they also have like um, different theaters, different performances going on, and UMass also puts on all that stuff. And they'll send us a newsletter every Thursday with all the things that are happening over the weekend. So it's really easy to find opportunities to get out there and be social, especially um, if like you're in like a lot of like academic clubs instead of social based clubs. And another thing, because Northampton is so close by, and we have like a bus that goes right to Holyoke, they'll tell you more about the PBT on tour. Um, but there's like a like, cool like little underground indie music scene going on. So uh, there are a lot of concerts from like small artists that are going on in Northampton and Holyoke. So I like to go to those. But there are also a lot of like basement shows that I think are really cool. Um, so that's about it. Yeah. All right. Cool. With that, uh, I'd like to uh, give a round of applause to our.